Hi guys, welcome back to Van Man Vapes. So in this video, it's another build video, and what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be showing you how to wrap your basic sort of macro or micro coil. I say macro or micro because they both sort of work the same. They're one's just a little bit smaller than the other. As you would know, if you've watched my other video on different coil sizes, I'll drop a link in the description below to that one for you. Two seconds. Let me just raise that camera a little bit. There we go, that's a bit better. So yeah, so today we're gonna to be sort of going over how to wrap, how to install, and then wicking your macro or micro coil. Now, the reason this coil is so good is because it's standard single wire, round wire, you just wrap it, put it in and go. There's nothing fancy, it's not time consuming, so if you're in a rush and you just need a new coil, or if you're just getting into the rebuildables and your RTA and your RDAs and you, you just want to sort of get started and you want to do your basic coil, you want to put it in and you want to have a vape, it's absolutely perfect for that. And they are effective, you do get good flavour, you do get good clouds. So yeah, they're, they're pretty good coils, especially with how quick and easy they are to sort of wrap and install. So we can go through what we're going to be using today. I'm going to be using my Ude coil jig. You're going to want wire cutters. You're going to want your ceramic tweezers. Your normal tweezers or a cotton hook. I use it for sort of poking the cotton down into the juice well. Your cotton for the wicking afterwards. I've already cut it and rolled it. I use Muji cotton pads. Your RDA or RTA, whatever you're putting it in. Your RDA or RTA tool. And your wire. I want some cotton shears or scissors if you're using scissors. I use cotton shears because they are very sharp and they're very easy to use. So let's get started, shall we? Today I'm going to be using 24 gauge Nichrome or NI80. I've already straightened it. I do have a video on how to straighten your wire. I'll put a link below. It's so much easier working with straightened wire. You haven't got to worry about the curves. You just literally you straighten it, bang, you go, done. Piece of cake. So I'm going to be wrapping it around a 3.5mm jig today. So that will be classed as a macro coil rather than a micro coil as it is a bit bigger. So let's get started shall we. So you put your wire in your jig. If you're not using a jig, you're using a screwdriver, anything round. I mean, you don't have to use a jig, you can use a screwdriver. Anything that's round that you can wrap wire around, you can use as a coil jig. So if you want to save money and you don't want to bother with the jig, then don't worry about a jig. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to wrap it around here, I'm going to do it by hand, I'm not going to use the rest of the jig. And I think I'm probably going to go for 5 wraps, 6 wraps, let's go 6. That's 2, 3, 24 gauge is a really sort of good gauge wire to work with. Is it's white, it's not too thin and fiddly, you get a good resistance, you get a good size coil, It's unless you're doing anything fancy, it, it's a good sort of all round wire. One, two, three, four, five, one more. Then what you want to do is you want to pull your leg nice and tight, I'm going to use my cutters to do that, I'm just not going to pull them very hard. There we go, and that is how easy it is to make your basic sort of macro or micro coil. You literally you wrap your coil, your wire around your jig, and there you go. Nice, clean and easy coil. So we're going to snip leads. And also, when you're only using a single coil as well, it's easy to sort of move the coil around and get it in the right position in the RDA once you've done it. So, I'm going to put this here just so you can sort of watch what I am doing. So, you want to get your leads, you want to pop it in your RDA like so. Now, I find it is easier 
to keep your jig for your coil as you're doing it. So we're going to push that in there up to the posts. You get that lead in there. We're going to get the RDA tool. And then we're going to tighten up that grub screw there. That's one lead in, nice and tight. See, I've still got the jig for it there. And then take the jig out, pop it in the other side of the coil. And I'm going to push that over. Get the other lead sort of lined up where I want it. And then same process, get it where you want it, hold it down, tighten up your grub screw, and bang, done. So this video, is, this is going to be good for the beginners, the people that just want to get into coil building, they want to get off of stock coils, they want to start using an RDA or an RTA and save themselves a bit of money. So this is going to be sort of aimed at the beginners out there because... All the experienced vapors, you, you're all, already going to know how to do sort of basic coil builds. And there we go. So that's sitting in there nice and neat. Now obviously you've got those legs there, you do not want those legs. So what you want to do now is you want to take your cutters and you want to cut as close to the post as you can. Now we're only going to do a single coil today, purely out of sort of ease and time saving. This is a dual coil RDA, but you can run, these days you can run whatever you want, in whatever you want. I'm not have to worry about that. So now your coil's in, don't be mistaken and think you can just whack your cotton in and go. So I'm going to turn it on. That is coming in at 0.34 ohms. Which is not bad for a single coil. I mean, when you, when you start going dual coil, when you use two coils, it cuts the ohms in half. So if you do want a dual coil build, make sure your resistance is sort of high enough that it's able to be split in half. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this at 32 watts. And you're going to want to give it a couple of gentle pulses until it starts glowing orange. And then that's when you want to start adjusting it. So you've got your ceramic tweezers here. And what you do with them is you want to use them to sort of squeeze your coil together. And then you want to strum it. So you just want to take the points of that and you just want to rub it across the coil there. And what you want to do, you want to get that so it's pulsing evenly. You want it heating from the inside out. So all you've got to do is keep pulsing it, keep squeezing it and keep scraping it until it is heating how you want it to heat. So it's not hard to do at all. I mean, there we go. I've done that already, mainly. Let that cool down quickly and just show you guys. So you've got your coil. Bang. There we go. Starts off at the inside, goes to the outside of the coil. Glowing nice and bright orange. Now, nichrome, when you use nichrome, when you pulse it, it does, the resistance does go up. I mean, this was, what did I say? It was 0.36 or something like that. It's now gone up to 0.44. Which is fine, absolutely fine. Just means you won't need as much wattage to sort of heat it up, which means you're not going to be using as much of your battery power. So once you've pulsed it, what you want to do after that is you want to make sure your post screws are still nice and tight because the heat from pulsing can sometimes cause them to loosen. So once you've done that, so it's in, it's pulsing nice and evenly. So now what you want to do is you want to wick it. Now, I'm not going to go into sort of wicking technique too much here because there's so many different types of cotton out there. There's, and they're, they're different. They don't all come in a square pad. Some come in strips. It's so, basically what I've done is I've already prepared it. I've got my Muji cotton pad. I've cut it to size. I've sort of fluffed it out and then rolled it up ready to wick. So if you are going to be using cotton, Muji cotton, so obviously you can pay attention now, but what you want to do is you want to get your cotton and roll it out. I will be doing a tutorial on wicking for anyone that is interested, any beginners out there that are going to start sort of getting into your rebuildable soon. 
you want to poke it through one end you want to grab it and then there you go you want to make sure you don't want it too loose you do want it to fill the coil but you don't want it so tight that you're pulling pulling your coil around as you're adjusting your cotton get that bit of wire out of the way so then you're going to want to take your cotton shears scissors whatever you're using you're going to want to trim your cotton down So as I said at the start, this is the most basic of basic coil builds. This is one step up from buying pre-made coils because some people do make their coils and then sell them. Not only do they benefit from it because they're making money, but some of them have fun doing it. They enjoy making coils and it also helps people out that sort of, they want to get into the rebuildables. They don't want to be buying stock coils, but they don't have the time or the patience to try and spin their own coils. Then what you want to do, you want to get your tweezers or something pointy, your hook for your cotton, whatever. You just want to quickly give your cotton a little rake, sort of takes out any loose frilly bits. And it also gets all your cotton sort of going in one direction. So in that way, when it wicks, when you put your juice in, it's gonna, it'll follow the direction of the cotton and it will soak it up, almost like you're using a straw. So that's going to improve your wicking if your cotton is all sort of straight and going in one direction rather than all over the place like an afro. <laughs> like an afro. <laughs> uh, I hope it wasn't just me that that made chuckle. So here we go. We've got it nice and raked. We've got it fluffed up. Then what you're going to do is th this will be a little bit trickier if you're using an RTA rather than an RDA. Because RTA is where it's a tank and you only have the sort of the chamber in the middle for your coil. You do have sort of tiny little holes that you've got to get your wick down. So the RDA is a bit easier in that sense as it's open body. You've got your juice well in the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to tuck your cotton in to your juice well. And you don't want to completely fill it up. What you want is you want it to just be touching the bottom of your juice well. Just sitting in there. You want to have air around your coil because that's going to allow for your airflow uh, better airflow it's going to not let it get too hot and dry your cotton out too fast so it's going to reduce the sort of risk of getting dry hits so there we go hold on i haven't poked that down very well so there we go we've got the cotton in there we've tucked it down we've fluffed it up we've tucked it down You've still got air that can get around the coil and that is basically how you're going to want to install and wick your coil and then what you want to do please don't do it i've seen people do it please do not do it do not pulse your coil with dry cotton all you're going to do is burn your cotton so then what you want to do is you want to get your juice i'm going to be vaping on puff juice cupcake puff I have reviewed this flavor it's a very nice flavor i'll put a link to the review in the description below in case you want to check that out very rich flavor very clean it's not a coil killer and what you want to do you want to absolutely saturate you want it soaked once you've soaked your cotton you can sort of drip some into your juice well as well bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt she's probably not but you know and then, so let's whack that up a little bit. Let's whack it up to 40 watts as it is now sitting. Now it is wicked and now it is juiced up. It is now sitting at 0.45 ohms. So there we go. Give it a little, wow, look at that. See, like I said, it's easy to, easy to wrap. They're easy to install. They don't take long. And as you can see, they are very effective. That is giving off a lot of vapour. And where I've done it around sort of quite a wide jig done it around 3.5 mil bit there is quite a bit of wire there so it's quite a bit of surface area so it is good you are going to get good clouds you are going to get good flavor it is going to be a very nice vape i mean after i've done this video i probably will wrap another one of them coils and whack it in the other side and run it dual like i said the only reason i haven't in the video was purely for sort of time purposes you'd have had to have watched me with spin two coils you had to have watched me wick two coils so Let's have a look and see how this vapes. It 
See, again, reinforcing what I've said, that is a very, very good coil build. I mean, let, let me just back up a bit there. So you've seen how quick I did it. You've seen how basic it is. It's just round wire, wrap six times. There's nothing fancy. It's not a Clapton. I mean, the flavour I'm getting off of that, that's amazing. It is an incredible vape. So there you go. For the beginners, if you want to get into coil building, if you don't have a lot of time, time for exquisite coil building, there you have it. Your basic sort of macro or micro coil, round wire, single wire, wrap it round, shove it in, bang. Please like the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. There will be lots more videos coming soon. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.